Uploading YouTube video is pretty easy to do, but there are some little tips and tricks you may not know about that can help your videos stand out. So let's upload a video. So on YouTube, when you sign into your account, go up to create, then upload video, and that will take you to the video upload page. You can either click select files to search for the file, or you can simply click and drag your video or multiple files if you're uploading more than one into the window and your uploading will start. While you're waiting for your upload to finish, you can enter in all the necessary details that'll help people find your video, such as a title, which is one of the most important aspects of how people search to find your video, your description, which can help fill in some of the needed information on what your video is about and what people will get out of it, and your thumbnail that provides the most important first impression to your video. If you have a thumbnail already made, you can either click upload file to find it, or just click and drag the file there to add it. If you don't have a thumbnail made, YouTube will either pick a frame from your video automatically, or you can choose a frame from your video to use. Making your own thumbnails is almost always the best option if possible. Some other key points in the details are specifying if the video is made specifically for kids, if it includes altered content, which essentially means making something look real that didn't actually happen, whether it's a person's voice or likeness, a place or a thing. You can also add tags to your video, but currently the best use for tags are if there are multiple search terms or common misspellings for the topic you're making content on. Then below are options to change settings for language, location, embedding, dubbing, remixing, category, and comment preferences. Now going back to the description, there are additional features that will help make your video more searchable and easier to follow. For example, you can add chapter markers that make it easy to find specific topics or sections in your video, and these will auto-populate in the video play bar. You can also add links which can be links that are relevant to the video, affiliate links, socials, or whatever else is applicable. And if you have a number of links or pieces in your description that you use in all of your videos, the Reuse Details tab is a great way to copy-paste them. And lastly, you can add hashtags which helps tell YouTube what some of the most important search terms are for your video. The monetization tab only appears when your channel has reached the requirements and is approved, so you won't see this tab if you haven't gone through that process. So the next tab will be video elements, and these are resources that aren't inside of the actual video itself, and the music license tab you see here is only for monetized channels for when you need to add a license you got from Creator Music. So starting with subtitles, this is where you can add your own custom subtitles to your video, and this allows your video to be easily read and or translated to other languages, it helps people who are hard of hearing, and it can show up when people are hovering over your video and want to see what it's about and what's being said before they actually click on it. It can also slightly boost its searchability too. YouTube does auto-generate subtitles, and it's gotten pretty good, but generally if you upload your own, they tend to be more accurate and useful. There are plenty of pieces of software that can auto-generate captions or subtitles. I personally use the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, but there are other free options like Vibe that you can use. Next, let's take a look at end screens. Here you can add a custom layout of videos and your channel icon in the last 20 seconds or less of your video to guide viewers either to specific content on your channel or elsewhere, or directly to your profile. And lastly, cards are similar, except cards are smaller pop-out links that overlay on your video, but can be placed on any time frame and have more external linking features. Once you place it in the time frame you want, it'll appear like this in your video and link to whatever place you set it to. Once you've completed those steps, you'll have the checks page, which will auto-detect if there's any copyrighted content in your video. And then you'll move to the last step on the visibility page. This is where you can choose how you want to publicize your video. You can set it to go public so that the world can see it immediately. You can set it to unlisted so that it doesn't show up on your profile or searches, but it will allow anybody with a link to see it. You can set it to private so that only specific people you give access to can view it. Or if you want to schedule it to go public at a specific time, you can do that here. And when you set how you want to publish it, you can select either save or schedule to complete the process. And that's how you upload a video to YouTube. Now on mobile, it's a similar process. On the YouTube app, you can select the plus icon and switch over to video to get rid of the scary face. Then select any video from your gallery that you would like to upload. Once you select it, hit next, and then you can add your title, description, thumbnail, and any other settings you want to change. Just note that if you want to add subtitles and end screen and cards from mobile, you'll most likely need to do it from the desktop version of the YouTube website. Now you've successfully uploaded a YouTube video and hopefully learned some good tips along the way. If you like this video, press a bunch of buttons down below and leave a comment and let me know where you're at on your YouTube journey. I'll see you in the next video.